Polycystic kidney disease, or PKD, is a genetic disease in which the kidneys become filled with hundreds of cysts, or fluid-filled sacs, causing them to be larger than normal and to quit functioning over time. These cysts develop in the outer layer, the cortex, as well as the inner layer, the medulla, of both kidneys. These cysts, which are lined with renal tubular epithelium, fill up with fluid and get larger and larger over time, making the kidneys much larger than normal. The blood vessels that feed neighboring healthy nephrons can get compressed by growing cysts, which literally starves them of oxygen. Poorly perfused kidneys respond by activating the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which facilitates fluid retention and leads to hypertension. Also, expanding cysts can compress the collecting system, causing urinary stasis, and in some cases this can lead to kidney stones. Additionally, destruction of the normal renal architecture can cause symptoms like flank pain and hematuria, or blood in the urine. Over time, as enough nephrons are affected, it leads to renal insufficiency and eventually renal failure. Now, the first type of PKD is autosomal dominant PKD, or ADPKD, which used to be called adult PKD since symptoms usually manifest in adulthood. The first gene responsible for ADPKD is PKD1, which when mutated causes the more severe and earlier onset variety, and PKD2, which when mutated causes less severe disease and is also later in onset. PKD1 and PKD2 code for the polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 proteins, respectively, which are components of the primary cilium. Now, the primary cilium is an appendage that sticks out from most cells in the body and receives developmentally important signals. More specifically, in the nephron, as the urinary filtrate flows by and causes it to bend, polycystin 1 and polycystin 2 respond by allowing calcium influx, which activates pathways in the cell that inhibit cell proliferation. If either component's absent, that signal to inhibit cell growth isn't received, and so cells proliferate abnormally and start to express proteins that cause water to be transported into the lumen of the cyst, which makes them get larger and larger, compressing the surrounding tissue more and more. And this is how cysts develop and grow. As expected for a dominant disease, a person who develops ADPKD would have inherited a single heterozygous mutation in PKD1 or PKD2. This leaves one functional copy of the gene in every cell, and this turns out to actually produce enough polycystin 1 or polycystin 2 to prevent cyst formation. So how does cysts occur then? Well, it turns out that a random mutation in the remaining good copy of the gene is almost guaranteed to happen in some of the tubular cells as the kidney develops. This second hit causes polycystin 1 or 2 to be absent and is what impairs normal signaling through the cilium and leads to cyst formation. So on the level of the person as a whole, ADPKD shows a pattern of dominant inheritance. But on the cellular level, it's technically a recessive trait. Polycystins are important in the kidney, but are developmentally important in other places in the body too. Patients can have cysts that are typically benign, pop up in the liver, seminal vesicles, and pancreas. The vasculature can also be affected. For example, individuals might develop aortic root dilation, which can lead to heart failure, and have berry aneurysms of the cerebral arteries, usually in the circle of Willis. These aneurysms can have a thin wall, allowing them to rupture and develop into a subarachnoid hemorrhage. Autosomal recessive PKD, or ARPKD, used to be called infantile PKD, since symptoms usually manifest in infancy. ARPKD happens when someone inherits a mutation on both copies of the PKHD1 gene, which codes for the fibrocystin protein. Fibrocystin co-localizes with polycystin 2, where, although largely unclear, it might be involved in the regulation pathway and calcium signaling described with ADPKD. And therefore, it's thought that a similar mechanism might cause cyst formation in ARPKD. In any case, with ARPKD, this cyst formation can lead to renal failure even before birth, which means the fetus has trouble producing urine. And since amniotic fluid comes from the fetal urine, fetuses with ARPKD can develop oligohydromnios, or low amniotic fluid. 
In fact, if enough amniotic fluid is missing, then it can cause Potter sequence. Without the amniotic fluid, the uterine walls actually compress the fetus, which causes physical developmental abnormalities, like club feet and a flattened nose. Also, as a part of Potter sequence, is pulmonary hypoplasia, or underdeveloped lungs, since the amniotic fluid is important in helping the lungs expand and develop normally. Underdeveloped lungs can cause respiratory insufficiency after birth, which ends up being fatal in a lot of cases of ARPKD. For diagnosis, ARPKD is one of the many conditions that can be picked up via prenatal ultrasound, which could show bilaterally large kidneys with cysts and oligohydromnios. ARPKD also causes congenital hepatic fibrosis, which over time can cause portal hypertension or compromised blood flow through the portal venous system. Portal hypertension can cause esophageal varices, upper GI bleeds, hemorrhoids, and splenomegaly from blood being shunted through the collateral veins. Since cholangiocytes, or the epithelial cells that line the bile ducts, also have primary cilia that express fibrocystin, ARPKD can also cause defects in the bile ducts, which leads to dilation. Dilated intrahepatic ducts can cause cholestasis, or poor bile secretion, and dilation of the common bile duct can lead to ascending cholangitis. The treatment of PKD is usually directed at specific symptoms and organ dysfunction. For example, for hypertension, medications like angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers can be used to counteract activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Also, ursodiol is sometimes taken to help treat cholestasis, since it slows down the rate at which cholesterol is absorbed by the intestines. In cases of kidney failure, dialysis or kidney transplants are sometimes needed. For individuals with portal hypertension, a portal caval shunt, which bypasses the liver by connecting the portal vein to the inferior vena cava, or again, a liver transplant might be needed. All right, as a quick recap. Polycystic kidney disease is a genetic disorder in which the kidneys become filled with hundreds of cysts, causing them to be larger than normal and to fail over time. PKD comes in two varieties, autosomal dominant, which presents in adulthood, and autosomal recessive, which presents in infancy or even before birth. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.